Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to the Soap Thing Project and thank you for joining me today. Uh, on the project today, I have Eric Adams of Better Every Shave. What's going on, Eric? Not much. How are you doing today? I'm doing all right. It's uh, the middle of the night, about 02 in the morning for me. <laughs> but I'm a, I'm a night shift worker and it's my weekend, so everything kind of just uh, worked out. That so just proves here, your dedication, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess. So for those of you who are watching this video and going, okay, well, what is this all about? I'm starting a new uh, podcast series where I invite other content creators uh, onto the Soap Thing Project. And we just kind of pick a topic and and spitball about it for a half an hour. And hopefully there's some some healthy substantive disagreement, but if not, well, I guess we'll just have to agree to agree. You know what I mean? Um, I think between the two of us that there'll be plenty of people that disagree. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, kind of a little bit of your background and how you get into this hobby and how it turned into a YouTube channel? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I, like, I think most men sort of struggled with finding a good shave for most of my life. Uh, I watched my grandfather's shave the traditional way. You know, my one grandfather was a injector guy and the other was a Gillette guy. And I, I always saw those products in their bathrooms. But for some reason, when I was a teenager and started shaving, I just gravitated towards what was available in the drugstore or the grocery store. And that was, of course, you know, Gillette's uh, cartridge products. And so I started with um, sensors and um, Mach 3 and and those razors. And I <clears throat> stuck with them for a long time and uh, always had issues with, you know, the base of my neck here around my Adam's apple, the swirl of hair. And um, and I, I was a, a white collar worker, so I had to wear a suit and tie every day and, and I had to shave every day too. And so there was just a lot of, you know, irritation i always had razor bumps here which you know I'd, I'd find myself trying to hide because it was a, a little embarrassing to be dressed up nicely and kind of have that you know be be i guess a visible mark of like doesn't this guy know how to shave <laughs> you know that kind of thing yeah and so um so yeah so i uh almost three years ago um well, actually back up so about 10 years ago i bought a mercure 33c and um I got some awful blades. I don't even, there's, they're not even marked. I don't know what kind they are. And um, just some, some soap that wasn't all that great. And I, and I just really didn't understand what I was doing. And I tried it a couple times and, and just did poorly and then said, okay, well, this isn't any better. And, and I give up at that point. I really, I don't think there weren't the same resources that there are now. Like, I think if I were trying it new today, being able to see YouTube videos and, and other people, I think it's more visible now that there's more products. If I were to go on Amazon and search for, you know, for that type of stuff, there's a lot more choice. Um, anyway, so I put it away for until about two and a half, three years ago, pulled it back out, tried it again. And this time I stuck with it and I did find those resources and I did, you know, really have an interest and, and figured out that, Oh, this is a, this is a great way to shave. Um, and so from there, I sort of got sucked in, you know, because of those same resources, I was like, oh, there's that razor and that razor and there's all these vintage razors. And it just sort of snowballed from there and and ended up with a collection of almost 100 razors and, you know, that, that whole thing. And then went, got into brushes and soaps, you know, and uh, so here I am today and I love it. And, uh, and, and the YouTube channel really came about because I was watching other YouTubers and they you know, encouraged me and they said, Hey, you know, if you're really this enthusiastic, like everybody has a voice, you know, why not get out, get out there and put yourself out there and see what people think. And so I did. And yeah, here I am. No, you're absolutely right. Uh, my, my story was, um, substantially similar. I, I had been in the military for about six years and I 
had to shave every day and I was getting okay shaves. I'm not somebody who converted because the um, cartridge razor shaves I was getting were bad. I converted because I slowly found out that cartridge razors were better. So like, like the one doesn't have to be bad for the other to be just better. I, uh, but I got to tell you for about two, I spent two years shaving with a safety razor and just hacking my face apart. But by God, it was it was eight to ten times cheaper. So I was like, I am going to learn how to do this or I'm just going to look like an idiot going into work. And so <laughs> but it, it never occurred to me to to look at YouTube to see, mm. OK, what am I doing wrong? I was just, I just like learned by trial and error. And by the time I discovered YouTube shaving channels, I had kind of already figured it out. And I was sending uh you know, Don Younger from Wet the Face? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was sending him uh, hardware and software to review. And it got to where I was doing it so often that he finally, I think half jokingly said, well, why don't you just start your own YouTube channel and do it yourself? And I was like, okay, I guess I'll go do that then. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, it, I think a lot of what pushes people into shaving the old fashioned way is that the for some reason they feel dissatisfied with the status quo mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah does that make any sense it does it does and i think there's a lot of reasons um you know better shave in my case was what really sort of led me in that path but then once i realized sh shaving was always something that was like a necessity like i did it because it, it was like brushing your teeth like i just had to do it and it's not like i've ever like maybe there's toothbrushing enthusiasts out there <laughs> i don't Somehow know i doubt it i don't know you know you never there's a there seems to be a, a anyway uh so shaving had become this really interesting thing all of a sudden like it there was a, a passionate community around it there were all these really cool products and some of them were the vintage stuff was really intrinsically cool um and and at the time very inexpensive like of the prices now are kind of crazy for some of the vintage stuff that i bought for ten dollars or less is now like 40 50 60 dollars it's like wow okay um but that shows you i think the popularity of the hobby so um but no i think you're absolutely right there's so many things to enjoy and learn and you know that kind of draw you in and, and keep you interested in uh in shaving as as a hobby much more so as sort of a utility thing so right uh speaking of the hobby that's a good segue into uh the topic for this video so how this is going to work is anytime i have on a guest we're going to pick a topic and just tear it apart and so the topic for today is uh soap tub sizes and maybe the pros and cons of this size versus that size. Like here we have a, um, this is from Cooper and Prent, uh, Cooper and, wow, you'll have to excuse me for that, <laughs> CNF. Cooper and French, this is the um, their standard four ounce tub. This is Pasteur's Reserve from Pasteur's Pharmacy. And four ounce, four ounces of soap or 142 grams. Actually, this is five ounces. So, yeah. So four to five to five and a half has been kind of the industry standard mm -hmm. for, for the last five years. Only recently, I mean, Katie's Bubbles has been doing, you know, two ounces of uh, of soap for a while. And then just recently you had Denton Magic really leaning into the uh, to the smaller sub tub sizes. He's doing uh, two and a half ounces. If I can get that to show up on camera. <laughs> yeah, I've got the Mighty Mac too. Yeah. But he actually leaned way into kind of the premium aspect of the uh, smaller shaving soap tubs because mm -hmm. these are like glass versus the rest of them are, you know, these are just your typical plastic jars. Yeah. So um, why do you think um, or do you think that four ounces, five ounces, five and a half ounces – was it always too much or has it kind of sort of evolved to that? So I think if you were a utility shaver and you were just buying a tub of soap, maybe two, maybe three, you know, just a handful of soaps to rotate through that four or five, even some six ounce tubs. I mean, that that's a great value 
because it's it's you know it's a good quantity of soap. It's going to last you for a good while. And um, <clears throat> and again, if you're if you're using it regularly, you will go through it. My problem with that is that it's not about the value proposition, although of course I don't want to overpay, but at the same time, I'm never going, I, I have so many tubs of soap now that I'm never, ever going to get through it. It it would take three lifetimes at least for me to get through what I have now, let alone the stuff that I continue to buy. And I've I have cut way back on on purchases. I, I'm now like a once every other month kind of purchaser. Um, you know, when something piques my interest, I'll, I'll go for it. But I really, really appreciate artisans that are putting out smaller product sizes uh, simply because it just it makes more sense for me as a hobbyist because I don't need four or five or six ounces of soap. I think, you know, this two and a half ounce from Denton Magic, it's perfect. I've used it maybe I don't know, eight times, 10 times. And I still have only really used, you know, a little bit of it because it's so that's the other thing. Today's soaps are so rich that you don't need very much to create an incredible amount of lather. Yeah. Look at that. Right. So, I mean, in the, maybe in days past where you'd actually have to take a good scoop of it and, you know, you're using a, a, a you know, a solid amount of it. I mean, I'm, I'm using, I feel like I overuse sometimes because I'll make a huge lather and there'll still be a little bit of soap left in the bottom of the bowl. And it's like, you know, but, um, so I think you have, you know, the, the better formulas, better bases you have, you know, the, the tub sizes themselves are just for me way too big because the other thing is, even if it's a good per ounce price, you know, you start pushing into the four or five dollar per ounce, and it's a now you're talking, you know, twenty, twenty five dollars, thirty dollars, even more, just for the soap. And then you get the set, and all of a sudden you're looking at fifty dollars, and it's like it for one soap and, and for one set. That's just that's a that's a lot. And maybe you know, maybe there are people, and I'm I'm sure this is the case because I've seen some of their closets, <laughs> but they, maybe they just have that income to spend. Um, but I really don't. I have to be cut careful about what I spend. And so uh, if more artisans put out two ounce tubs or two to three ounce tubs, I would be inclined to buy instead of a $50 set, it's a $25 set. I'm going to buy two sets of something then. You know, so as a consumer, I'm going to spread that money around more. And I think in general, it's a better it's a win-win for me and and for the artisan themselves because it's more likely that I'm going to buy more things for different artisans. So sure, it's less per, you know, they're making less profit, I assume. I don't know. Um, but yeah, for, for me, smaller is is just a better idea, a better proposition. So yeah. Yeah, I um you're not wrong. I mean, with these with these little tubs, uh, they're there is a lot of diminishing return where the smaller a tub they they sell you, the more they have to charge you relative to the amount, the more the, the higher price per ounce they kind of have to sell you to to uh, to make it worth their while. But I uh, I think I think the reason that we still have these large tubs, especially from artisans, is because it's it's kind of a holdover from about five or six years ago when there were very few uh, hobbyists. Like uh, if you go back and look at like the old school artisans that have been around for a long time, you know, Sterling, San Shannon Soaps, uh, Strop Shop, Reef Point. Uh, back when they were making soap, there weren't very many hobby hobbyists who were just going to load their closet with uh with you know 150 of these things and when you're getting up there like i am like i'm i'm at the point where i'm getting very i'm very quick to get jaded and very uh hesitant to buy new things unless i really think i'm gonna like it yeah because i gotta tell you you know this you know 5.8 ounce tub of 345 takes up a lot more space than this two and a half ounce tub from Denton Magic like it, it's it's not even close so I think um I think artisans uh 
I don't think legacy soaps are doing this. I think uh, Mitchell's Wolf at Tabac, Chella, you know, things like that are always going to be very large tubs of soap because they've been very large tubs of soap for 50 years. Right. So, but I think uh, artisans who uh, are making soap out of their garage are kind of starting to resign themselves to the fact that most of their customer base, I, I, I'm, I'm speaking anecdotally, but I, I really do believe most of their customer base is hobbyists. Like uh, they're, they're catching utilitarian shavers here and there peripherally, but the core customer base, I think, is as people who have lots of this stuff. And so they're finally starting to um, to respond to an increasingly vocal crowd of people who are like, I don't want this much soap. <laughs> and, I, and I don't care if I have to pay, if, if it's not as good a deal for me, I want something that's going to take up less physical space that I have a fighting chance of actually consuming fully. Like yeah. uh, I've got somewhere between 140 and 150 shaving soaps. I think of exhausted completely, probably 15 mm-hmm. in my entire life. Right. So, I mean, I've got enough soap to last me until I'm 70 years old. Yeah. And like most of it is probably going to get given away or resold mm-hmm. and yeah. and stuff like that. So, so I, I agree with you fully. I think uh, we've reached that point where, excuse me, where artisans are having to, excuse me, they're having to respond to a customer base that's increasingly not super patient with these large tubs of soap, like even uh three forty five for their uh black Friday deals. Those are out all two ounce sets. And you're seeing uh, more and more artisans that are not afraid to do that anymore. Cause they're kind of looking at everybody else and going, well, if they're doing it, then it must be okay for me to do it. And I think they've set the market too, right? So you look at most soap companies are going to be somewhere between, 15 and 25 dollars for a four ounce you know four to five ounce tub of soap if someone like heritage hill puts out a three ounce for ten dollars or you know this two and a half for for ten dollars it's almost like a, a you don't even have to think about it it's like wow that what a bargain and yes of course it's less soap but at the same time like i said i mean i'm going to be inclined to buy more product at that lower price point one because it's just less expensive and two because like you said i'm not going to have those giant tubs i already have an entire uh you know cabinet set up in my closet dedicated to just housing my shaving stuff and it's like how much is it <laughs> like how much can i possibly have before it becomes like ridiculous that and i agree with you like i gift some and you know i i trade and, and that kind of stuff and, th- and that's fine that's all part of the community um but yeah it's, i just i feel sort of almost guilty at this point buying another four or five ounces of soap that i'm never going to get through um the other thing is a lot of artisans don't want to do samples and i understand why it's a lot of work for a very little bit of return yeah it's uh, a loss leader to- for them yeah but again instead of samples if they were to do these smaller sizes then i would be way more inclined instead of going to maggards or some other you know vendor that is offering me samples that they themselves create i'll more likely go to the vendor and just buy their smaller soap because i'm not going to have a problem spending twenty dollars on a soap and splash set you know but spending 40 to 50 on ones that i don't know and I'm sort of I'm terrible with scent descriptions too, because I'll read something and think that's bang on for me. Like that is so in my wheelhouse. And then I get it and I'm like, oh I, boy, I was wrong. And so I, you know, I'm now gun shy, like you said, I'm jaded. Like uh, I'm I'm very careful with, you know, just because and, and I've started to learn the other beautiful thing about YouTube is like I've started to learn the tastes of other YouTubers. And like when they try something and they say they like it, then I kind of, I feel better. Like, it's like, okay, if I know that soap thing likes this soap and I know his tastes and it's more than likely that I'm going to like it as well. Um, and so I'm starting to use that. But if there were these smaller soaps, 
I guarantee you, I would be much more inclined to just try and not, not even worry about it. Yeah. You'd be more likely to take a shot in the dark. Yep. Um, yeah, it's a funny thing. I I'm at this point, I've gotten to be kind of a soap sommelier. Like uh, I can look at a scent description on paper and I've gotten very good at being able to tell if I'm going to like it. And I'm usually pretty correct about that. Like, I don't, I don't know what it is. I, I've always had a, a very sensitive sense of smell. Mm. Uh, so I've gotten to where, like after I just had a endoscopic sinus surgery and a septoplasty. And if anything, my ability to smell got better after that. <laughs> like, oh, I bet. Yeah. Like I, it I, things I, up, smelled right? a, <laughs> I smelled this Irish coffee right after I got out of the hospital. Mm. I whipped it up. Well, right after I got the stents taken out of my nose. Mm-hmm. And I've stuck my nose in there thinking I wouldn't be able to smell it. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> well, if it's anything like uh, the Katie's bubbles that I have, it's it's a good, strong scent. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, the, the Katie's bubbles doesn't play around. How, <laughs> how much, uh, to your point, not to go off the rails, off topic, but uh, how much do you think is too much? Well, like, like if you had to give an exact number oh. <laughs> of, of what amount of products is too much. You mean overall quantity, like how many? Yeah, sure. I mean, it depends on, so longevity has a lot to do with it. I've only been at this for about three years. And so, you know, I think the collection I have right now, so because I went through a, a razor phase and that was six months of just nothing but razors with a couple soaps. Like I literally had a Parasso and a Chella and <laughs> I, right. I had like three or four soaps. I didn't care. And then I went on a brush phase and did that for six months. And so that was at least a year of, of my journey. And then, you know, once I, f- I finally started getting into soaps, then it was about, I am not a frag head. I know nothing about fragrances. I don't know what any cologne smell like. I'm, I'm terrible at it. So when you guys all get into your scent stuff, I'm just like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Right. I have no basis of comparison. So I've been very careful about just trying samples and just getting samples, you know, put in six orders to maggards of all of their different samples. And, and, and I enjoy that because then it sort of gives me a point of reference in that case. But uh, so because I've only really been into soaps for a little over a year, I feel like I've already, you know, I've probably got, I don't know, 30 you know, 30 and not all of them are sets. Cause I really didn't get into aftershave until about four months ago. <laughs> right. Uh, it just wasn't, I didn't care. Um, but once I realized, Oh, that great smell of this, the soap doesn't last and I want it to last. Then it became, Oh, okay. Now I want an aftershave and I'm sure that'll probably lead to, Oh, now I want the EDT, <laughs> you know, yeah, and that, that's, that's usually where it goes. That's the rabbit hole people go down. Yeah. And that's fine that, you know, I don't have a problem doing those things in moderation. And and I think that's all part of the fun of, of the journey of, you know, of learning these things and trying new things. Um, but I do think I have a knee jerk reaction whenever I see someone, I forget who somebody recently did a, you know, shave down tour and it was just jaw dropping hundreds hundreds of tubs of soap and and matching sets and it was just like i'm sitting there thinking like that is literally like five six thousand dollars worth of product easily i mean might maybe even more i don't know um let alone and that's just soaps and, and splashes that's not even brushes and razors and who knows what else they've got you know but if that is what brings them happiness and they can afford to do it then I'm happy with that. It doesn't bother. It doesn't affect me. I don't care. I'm nobody's dad. I'm not going to tell you that it's the wrong thing to do. The only thing I I worry about is that if some people are putting it on the credit card and they're paying interest to have these things, that's not a great decision in my, my opinion. But again, I'm not here to tell anybody what's right or what's wrong. If that's what makes you happy, do it. You know, no, um, I, I, I get what you're saying. Um, okay, there's a lot to unpack here. <laughs> uh, so, in my personal opinion, if you were to come to me and say, Hey, I've been buying a lot of shaving soap uh, lately, when should I stop? 
I would say if I had to come up with a number off the top of my head, I would say if you have more than 30 shaving soaps, you you probably ought to hit the brakes. And I know I'm a, I know I'm being hypocritical because there's tons of us here on YouTube who have way more than that, three, four, five times more than that. Yeah. But if you're not trying to to be that way, you're just in exploration mode. I think once you've reached 30 shaving soaps, you probably have some overlap. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you probably got some redundant scents going on where there's shared scent notes. Mm-hmm. So I would say that I uh, that when it comes to software, I think certainly before 50, you ought to reconsider your position uh if you're concerned about it. If it's not a big deal to you, then I'll then I'll uh I uh, agree with your take on it that hey you do what you want, man. But if you're but if you're coming to me saying uh when should this be considered too much? I'm going to tell you between 30 and 50, you ought to start hitting the brakes a little bit. What I think even pragmatic people might say that's even that is, is thirties pushing it. I, I think, I mean, I agree with you. I think that, um, you know, 30, if you're a hobbyist, like purely you love it, you want to do it every day. I, I've, I le- recently started shaving every day because <laughs> I used to do it every two second or third day. And, I, I realized like, I want to use these products I have. I want to use all these razors, razors and stuff. So I'm going to just shave every day. Right. You know, even if I like right now I have just enough. <laughs> so tonight I'll probably, I'll probably have a shave because I, I, I enjoy it. It's sort of like therapeutic for me and I have all these great toys to use. And so I'm, I want to use them. Um, but I think there are probably people that would say 30 is probably is a lot. And there are people obviously that would say 30 is, is not, enough so right um there's probably not one perfect answer i agree with you i think that's a probably a, a good solid thing because i i agree i i am now starting to hit that where there are redundant things <clears throat> and there seem to be really popular fragrances within the shaving community i had to laugh um and this is not a a, a you know knock on them but master soap creations just came out with their tab- vanilla tobacco or tobacco vanilla um tom ford you know, yeah, the Tom Ford tobacco vanilla dupe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's like, well, okay, I already have, I own three of them. <laughs> you know, and it's, it, I love them because I, I'm a tobacco fanatic. Like that is my, you know, that's my favorite sort of those earthy, you know, not dirty, but earthy sort of uh, scents. You know, dark fruity scents, uh, that vanillas and sandalwoods and stuff. But anyway, uh, it does seem like once you hit thirty, there is you've you've kind of if you've sort of poked around and, and tried a lot of different things. So I'll say I have 30 full size tubs and probably a hundred samples. Right. You know, so it's, I, I've gotten around enough to sort of understand and, and because I'm starting to build my, what's the, what is the equivalent of a palette for, for nasal, for smell? Is there something like, cause I know palette's more of a flavor thing. I'm not sure if there's anyway. a, a technical term for it. Uh, I'll go with sommelier. <laughs> yes. Uh, I got that from whiskey sommeliers. You know, people like to sit there and sniff their their bourbon, which I like to do on occasion. But uh, I don't know if my nose is quite that good yet. Yeah. Well, those well, guys get paid good money for yeah. that. Yeah, they do. Well, uh, Zoom is hitting us with this uh, 10 minutes before it kicks yeah. us out. We got about seven and a half minutes left. Um, real quick, I want to... I wanna, uh, touch on a point you made earlier about not understanding certain scents. Unfortunately, I've gotten so good at describing scents that I, I will like break it down in like nitty gritty detail. Yes. And I, yes, I like, <laughs> I, ex- I expect people to know what star anise taste or smells like. I hope you're not tasting star anise. That'd probably be gross. I expect people to know what star anise smells like. I expect people to know what labdanum smells like i expect people to know what oud smells like and a lot of people don't uh and so that's something i gotta work on where i need to start uh describing scents in a much more primitive Mm -hmm. way like when i talk about cella for example i've done a video on cella before and i've said i'm like oh it's a cherry almond marzipan what i ought to just say is dude it smells like christmas cookies that's literally yeah. what it smells like. And then I think more people would uh, would resonate with that. But then there's, they're sitting there watching me wig out on, <laughs> on, on describing this stuff. 
and I don't think it's doing him any favors. And so you made a, a really good point with that. I think that if you were to start with saying it smells like Christmas cookies, and in case you didn't understand that, it's marzipan, cherry, and like, and I think that's what sort of bridges. Because the challenge I have is whenever I pick up a soap, Mighty Max is a good example. Like that's a very cologne type scent. There's a lot of little individual components in there that make up that sort of harmony of of fragrances. And so my trick is if I read the scent description and they call out you know, top notes, middle notes, and base notes, like it's very hard for me as a novice to, to know what I'm smelling. Like, okay, I, I get this and I'm starting to understand because I don't love Oak Moss. I've started to realize that Oak Moss is a little bit of a trick for me. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and, um, that soap is an Oak Moss heavy soap. Yeah. Yeah. And so like, but when Oak Moss is balanced with the right sort of counterbalance, to me, it's, it's nice. My problem is that there are certain soaps that I, without realizing it, intentionally go heavy on a certain note. And so, again, that ties back to me trying, as a novice, trying full-size tubs and the, the splash and everything with it. Like, that's that's a, almost like a risky proposition for me. And so I don't know, like, you're right. Like, how do I educate myself on what these things smell like? Because it's, it, it, when they become mixed together, it's difficult to pick them out and know what I'm smelling. And it's not like I can just, I guess, get samples of full, you know, just individual, maybe I can, maybe I can go somewhere and just get, you know, just get labdomum and just get you know, these different, and just so I know specifically what they smell like. I don't know. Right. Well, we're uh, down to about four minutes left. I think I'm going to do a frag out. You didn't uh, bring a fragrance, so I'll make sure to double spray for you. I'm going to use <laughs> uh, Tom Ford Beau de Jour. Have you ever smelled fine American blend? I haven't, but I've heard a lot of people talking about it, so it's one that I want to I want to try. So it's a shaving cream kind of smell. Uh, this is a fougere. So it's got your, oh, your lavender and your geranium. And this one's a bit oak moss heavy. So for those of you who know what a uh, fine American blend smells like, that's a Tom, a Yves Saint Laurent Reeve Gauche Perome dupe. This smells a lot like that. Only it's more oak moss heavy and less heavy on the licorice or star anise. But mm. uh, short answer is it's a it's a really classy kind of fougere, and I was lucky to pick that up at a really cheap price uh, off base here in Turkey. Uh, you got any uh, last minute words for uh, any last minute words of wisdom for this video? <laughs> Not me. No, that's that's why my name was better is better every shave because it's really. I've started at the, at the ground level and I'm really just sort of chipping away as I go. And, uh, it's thanks to, you know, YouTubers like yourself, I've learned, you know, specifically your channel and, you know, a couple others that, you know, I, I've really pulled a lot of knowledge out of you, 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 you're so casual about it because it's just something that's second nature to you. But to me, because I'm really, trying to build a basis of knowledge and understanding like i'm i'm listening to every little thing and so there's a there's a huge value um to people sharing what they're doing i think some people could say it's kind of silly and like why who cares who wants to watch this but if you have an interest i think there's a, a lot of value to um you know to being able to to see this in, in practice and hear what you're saying and so i i appreciate that and thank you for taking the time to to do it so well thank you for being a part of the wet shaving community i appreciate it uh seems like every time i'm meeting somebody new uh with good personal character and good intentions who just wants to learn something and have fun and have a relaxing shave you know what i mean that's it man well check out eric adams better every shave on youtube i will put him somewhere up here <laughs> and i will put him down there in the description of the video i'll put him all over the place for you to check him out so do check out uh, better every shave i want to thank everybody for watching and until next time this is soap thing telling you shave like you mean it thanks for watching <laughs>